Good evening and welcome to Content Your Phone While Live. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night fellowship here on the online church live on Facebook. And to, tonight I am will be ministering to you and I am Stanley and my, my wife will be ministering in Afrikaans and she is God and goeie naand en baie welkom vanavond by ons woensdagavond gemeente samen zijn hier so uit van der Bijl Park uit, loof die yes, heren ons is hier by Dani en Marty vanavond en ons saai van hier af uit as kies die hele Facebook face het verander en het is een beetje vreemd vanavond, maar ons sorteer het uit en ons loof die heren dat die vanavond saam met ons kan keir en geniet het saam met ons En um, wees deel van ons en gesels lekker saam loof die Heere. Look how the Facebook looks like. Oh my goodness. Dit is een hele gedoente. We are all skew here tonight. <laughs> how is even that possible? Sure. Sorry for this because here's a whole update on Facebook and we don't know what's going on here. <laughs> so I see when you see us, you see us. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, never mind, goodness. tonight we are ministering here from Van der Bijl Park, Gauteng. We are busy with our outreach here in Gauteng area. That's uh, Gauteng, Mipumalanga. That will be also northwest. The free state, if the Lord yes. willing, places that we're going to see. But mainly we're going to concentrate in Gauteng. Amen. So praise the name of the Lord. If you are uh, tuned in tonight live, um, share the message there to your timeline as well. <laughs> we don't know what's going on with Facebook, so sorry, this is not our bad, this is Facebook's bad. <laughs> but I mock up WhatsApp also. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and I can't turn it on my live camera, but, oh well, never mind. We are just going to carry on, just listening to the audio if you can't watch the video. And, but, um, we are going to minister tonight. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Ja, ons gaan vanavond lekker uitsaai hier vanaf. Ons het 'n lekker boodskap vanavond. Groei in geloof. Yes. Grow in faith. Praise the Lord. Grow here. in faith. We want to encourage each and every one of you tonight. If you are tuned in live, in please share the message even to your WhatsApp status. Share it there afterwards. We do load it up on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel with the same name. And then we also share the audio on WhatsApp and also on Telegram. So nice. if you cannot listen to the um, voice on uh, WhatsApp, you can join a Telegram group and there you can also listen to the voice there as well. But if you can listen to it on WhatsApp, it's not necessary for Telegram. Amen. So praise the name of the Lord. We are on our second day here in <coughs> Gauteng with our road trip visiting and ministering people of the con congregation and also yes. new and strange people to us, but not strange to others. Amen. <laughs> so we are so excited that the Lord can work again and Amen. people came to the Lord, they came to the spiritual rebirth and we're going to baptize some people so far. Yes. If the Lord willing, we're going to minister to others as well and we pray and pray with us that more and more people may come to the Lord, be born again, Amen. so that they can also be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit, and so they can also um, be, take, part. be part of the, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Ah, oh, yes. thanks a lot. My <laughs> wife has really helped me out there. <laughs> so praise the Lord. As soon, maybe, hopefully next time when we broadcast, this glitch in Facebook will be solved. But for now, this is what it is. Yes. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Now, tonight we're going to talk about grow in faith. Because um, recently a lot of people uh, came to the Lord. We prayed with them since okay. our conference in Hartenbosch earlier this year. That is, was in the beginning of October. And um, even you that are coming a long way in the Lord, sometimes we can get so discouraged, yes, dismayed, sir. disappointed, and even uh, to a point that we feel we are depressed. Yes. And why is that? And how must we look at it? And how should we confront it? And I want to ask you tonight, if I'm going to be able to read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, 
what can be the reason? If you can just mention it to us or just leave a comment here on Facebook, what do you think in your personal life hinders you to really um, serve the Lord fully? You came to the Lord, maybe for a week or two you were at, on this cloud and you were joyful and happy and you had so much hope for yourself and other people around you. And then all of a sudden it is as if your spiritual life came to a crash landing. Yeah. And all the emotions and all the feelings are gone. Yes. Why is it? Yes. Why is it? Why is it? And you have to say, 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 you have to Yes, amen. Bring then what? My I can open next yes, He's yes. watching. Bring then on camera. I oh, bring them on camera. No, we're not going to bring them on camera. We've got suggestions yet to bring my loose lyric on camera. That's fine. Because we have my loose lyric on camera. So we're going to do it. Small faith, if, if I can translate it roughly. Werner uh, um, says it's small faith. So we got little faith, little faith, little, little faith. faith. Seriously. <laughs> Where is the English translations this evening? So praise the Lord. What? Why do you think? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, <laughs> Jolene. So what do you think that in your personal life, yeah. what you can identify, what you think, where is so, um, that mark that I suckle on the year to do, that yeah. verhinder me <coughs> on what I want to do to do. I think that is not what you think is, that people are going to click. Yeah, yeah there's all new things on Facebook. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway. I think people are more aware of your art than they are as mothers. Yeah, that's mm. a big deal. Yes. That's a big deal. Yes. But the, the, the thing is, yes, we can, be, we can be become aware of our character. Yeah. But why do we become so aware of our character? Yeah. This, is one, this is one reason. Yes. Um, that we just fall into this may we we lack the diligence and the fervor and the zeal to serve the lord um so sans i think i probeer now alles raag en volgens die woord te doen en dan um skiet ek tekort wêreldse invloede en ou tradisies sosiale media werk normale lewe ja geld vriende drank yeah, there is, there is a lot of there are a lot of reasons yeah. and things that we can mention and say. Now we're talking about children of the Lord, no, yeah. not those. Not the world. Yeah, that hasn't come to the Lord yet. Yeah, amal wat al tot wel tot weder geboorte gekom het, waar die here begin dien het en die begin is so opgewonde en bly en jy so bly om die here te dien en jy gaan aan en alles en op 'n stadium dan voel jy, oh, nou is dit nie lekker nie. Nou begin ek wegval. Hoe kom voel mens so? Why is it like that? Even, and I want to encourage, and this is the thing tonight, we want to encourage Amen. the new born in Christ, those that came to the Lord recently, that yes. were, gave their life to the Lord and were baptized. We want to encourage you that what you are experiencing is not something strange. Yeah. And you might experience it um, during your Christian walk a lot of times, yeah. myriads of times. Not just once or twice or three or four times. Yes. You can experience it numerous times. Yeah, so that is what my man <coughs> said. That that is not something that we can just hear and feel. And well, so to feel me. And it can happen again in your physical life. But can you feel you that rock me like? I fall back. I suckle. And how come is that so? How come is that so? Yeah, so some of the videos up they say what Facebook is doing. Never update. Yes. En ek kyk vir myself recht, maar daar is het verkeerd. Ja. So, ons weet nie dat aangaan nie, hoopendlik gaan die glitch uitgesorteer word, volgende keer word ons seker recht te wees, <laughs> want ons jylle Facebook het gehad, dat al die goede sit op ander plek, en my screen is so volgeskryf, ek skien nie myself skaars, so, ons, dis Facebook se probleem. Ons gaan het uitsorteer, ons gaan alles probeer om het uit te sorteer. Yes, ons sal bykie opsoek en kyk. Maar jy maak vanuit sê vir ons kyk. Ja, of, of al die screen retijd af, 
Op je foon en dan draai je foon en dan kan je ons nog steeds zo kijken. Dat is een liefde hier. Dat is just a technical thing. Now, what actually, um, uh, um, what actually started or caused this thought was actually something that Elmerie shared with us. And it is yes. two verses. I just want to read the two verses and then we're going to explain everything else as well. Yeah. Now, first of all, we need to understand, uh, we must understand that the Word of God also um, describes us as trees. And why trees? Because trees must, tree starts with a seed and then it germinates and then eventually starts to grow. And when, as it is growing, it bears fruit. That's why we are um, described as trees. Ja, so in, in die, in die um, woord van die Heere beskryf die woord ons ook as bome. Ons word ook geseen as bome. Yes. Ons word vergelijk met bome. Yes. Hoekom? Want ons is, um, t- ons is soos een saad wat geplant word en dan begin ons groei en ons gaan groei en groei en groei en een boom begin vrug draan en dit is wat in ons geestelike leven gebeur. Ons word geplant en ons begin opkom en ons begin groei en dan moet ons ook vrug draan. So dit is ook om ons geseen word as bome. Oké, okay, so let us read uh, these two verses. This is in Hebrews 6. Um, 6, we're going to read verse um, 7 and 8. And because sometimes we don't regard or um, uh, understand the context of certain verses within a chapter or in a book, then it can become quite confusing. So let us just read these two verses, and this is one in Hebrews 6, verses 7 and 8. For the earth which drinks in the rain, that often comes upon it, and bears herbs, useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. Now, he uses the analogy of a physical tree to, to, to say something to us and describe something to us as human beings. And we're going to look at a context and especially us as believers, because this is the context. I want to go so in our comment, yes, okay. So I say, a man's rock, soms the leer gestalt in your geloof. Rarag, this is war. A man's begin with great enthusiasm, Na een rekkie droog dit op en verval in jou geestelike droogte. Um, wat is ek nou? Ons moet ook nie stil blij nie, ons moet praat en as ons so voel. Dit is nou wat Ina vir ons gesê. Yes. Kalk wil ons de vinnig groot groei. We lose our in, in, enthusiasm. Ja, en wanneer sê as die mens te veel concentreer op jou sonde, soos ek moet nie dit of dat doen nie. En ja, so dit is baie keer so, mens kyk so na baie dinge en dit maak jou moedeloos. Nou kom ons lees, lees gaan gauw hier in die breer 6 vers 7 en 8, want die grond wat die reen indrink, wat dikwels daarop val en nuttige plante voorbring, terwille van hulle vir wie dit ook bewerkt word, het deel aan die Seen van God, maar as dit doorings en distels oplever, deeg dit nie en is na by die vervloeking, die einde daarvan is die verbranding. So hier praat hy ook as, van ons as kinders van die Heere, hy vergelijk ons met die bome, wat um, groei en vrug dra en alles, maar as ons doorings en dissels begin dra, dan deeg ons nie meer nie, en ons is na by die vervloeking. So hy, hy tref een vergelijking met hier so met ons met bome. Yes, and if we take the, con- uh, the context into account, and we read uh, uh, from chapter 5, we can even read uh, earlier, but especially from chapter 5, then we can start to see what is the context of these two verses. Now, yeah. if we read at a, at a, a, from verses 11, from verse 11, I say verses, verse 11 of <clears throat> chapter 5, we're going to see more or less what is the context, what is the context of these two verses. And we must take this into account yeah. to understand what the Lord is trying to say to us. And I'm just going to read it. Verse 11. Of whom we have much to say and, uh, and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. 
For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Then I'm going to read chapter 6, verses 1 uh, to 3. Therefore, leaving the dis discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, of the laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again, again themselves the Son of God and put Him to an open shame. So first of all, the context where he starts off eventually to get to this point of the tree is uh, Christians, believers, that don't grow in their faith. And if they don't grow in their faith, what ultimately will happen? They will fall away to such an extent yeah. that they cannot <laughs> repent from their falling away uh, uh, condition. And this is where the Word of God says, then we only bring forth thorns and briars. Sure. Kom ons lees, hy sal in Hebreers 11, hy sê, waar er ons, um, waar er ons veel het, 5 ver na vers 11, oh, skies, 5 vers 11, waar er ons veel te sê het, wat zwaar is om te verklaar, omdat jylle traag geword het, om te hoor, dit sal die eerste ding wat ons kan verstaan, mens raak baie keer na jy wedergeboorte, raak jy traag om te hoor, yes. want hoewel jylle van weer die tyd leraars behoor te wees, het jylle weer nodig dat die mens jylle die eerste beginsels van die woorde van God moet leer en jylle het weer behoefte aan melk en nie aan vaste spuis nie. Want elkeen wat melk gebruik is onervare in die woord van gerechtigheid omdat hy een kind is. Maar vaste spuis is vir volwassenis vir die wat geestes vermoens besit dier die gewoonte geoefen om goed van kwaad te onderskui. En dan Hebrea 6 vers 1 Daarom moet ons nie bly by die begin van die prediking aangaande Christus nie, maar na die volmaaktheid voortgaan, sonder om weer die fondament te lewe van bekering uit dooie werke en van die geloof in God, van die geleer van die doop en van die handoplegging en van die opstanding van die dode en van die eeuwige oordeel. En dit sal ons doen as God het toelaat, want dit is onmoendlik om die wat eenmaal verlig geword het, en die jimmelse gaaf is gesmaak, en die heilige geest heel achter geword het, en die goeie woord woord van God gesmaak het, en die krachte van die toekomstige wereld, en al valle geword het, om dit weer tot bekering te, om weer tot bekering te vernieuwe, omdat hulle ten opzichte van hulle self, die seen van God weer kruisig, en ooplik tot skande maak. Nou ja, die sien ons, dit is die groe probleem, en ons as kinders van die leer, van die, ehm, Heere sy lewe, dat as daar nie een groei plaas vind nie, dan gaan ons afvallig raak, en in baie keer so in so toestand, ja, of so mate, dat het verskrikkelijk moeilik is om weer daarby uit te kom. So ons as kinders van die Heere, neem die Heere baie keer aan, en dit is wat ek vanmiddag verstaan nie sê, dit het my so getref, dat ons neem baie keer die Heere aan, en ons begin in die pad stap, en is een opgewonenheid, en amal is opgewonen saam met jou, en amal is blij saam met jou, en is hierdie hype met jou tot bekering gekom het, en dan le die doop voor, en het is hierdie geweldige uitsien na die doop, en amal is opgewonen saam met jou, dat jy gedoop word, so is hierdie pad wat nou gestap word, en het is aandag, eindelijk die hele tyd op jou, en na jou doop, dan is dit asof jy, eeuwiskielik moet groot word. Dan is het asof die hype verby is, asof die geweldige aandig wat na jou kant toe gekom het, nie meer daar is nie, en nou moet jy die pad self begin stap, sonder dat jy al die aandig en dinge kry wat die hele tijd op jou is, want die nieuwe bekeeling is een geweldige saak van, en dit is een nieuwe baba wat geboor is, allemaal is daar en betrokke en opgewon en al die dinge, maar na die jou doop, dan is het asof dit so'n bykie afmat, asof jy dan self die pad moet begin stap en self moet begin groei en groot word en zwaar, en dit is denk ek waar die groot probleem inkom. Ja, en dit is wat my wife is saying, dat 
Um, when, we, when you really come to the Lord, you are born again. You see the light, and the light has been... Uh, you, have, you, you were taken out of the kingdom of darkness in light, and you experience that new life. Yeah. It's like uh, the, a, a brand new birth. If you look at the baby that were born, everyone is so excited, and even up to the point uh, that, uh, of the birth, and everybody is there, and I just want to see, and they're all so excited. And it, with your spiritual rebirth, it's exactly the same. And yeah. then you get baptized, and all the <laughs> tension is there. And then all of a sudden, after your baptism, in one moment, yeah. you must stand on your own feet. Yeah. So all that uh, attention that was focused on you are mm -hmm. gone. And a lot of times, especially after a lot of believers' baptism, just a few days, sometimes a week or two after yeah, that, so. they start falling away. Yeah. And they become discouraged. Ja, want eindelijk, my man, het het jou aan die gang gehou. Yes. Dit was, dit was iets wat jou aan die gang gehou het. Allemaal is nou hier bezig met jou, en het is hier die opgewonenheid, en allemaal praat met jou, en dit is een getuienis wat jy kan lever, en al die dinge. En dan in die tijd is het as of een mens nie self die woord van die Heere lees nie. Jy, jy gaan maar op allemaal sy aandacht diepe van. En dan, wanneer jy klaar gedoop is en so, en jy moet nou op jou eie voetjes begin staan, dan voel jy oog genade, maar dit is nou werk om die Heere te dien. Dit is nou eindelijk my plig, <laughs> om die Heere self te dien, om die woord yes. te lees, om te bid, om te groei, om uit te sorteer, om ook my um, gewig in te sit en, en, en ook uit te sorteer en ander te nader, nie? Yes. Die altijd ander gaan my nader, my leiders gaan my die hele tijd nader, en nou moet ek my voelerkies ook begin uitsteek, en ek moet nou ook begin praat, en ek moet ook my leven begin deel yes. en uitsorteer. En ek denk, dit is a, dit is a groot skok eindelijk in een mense geestelike lewe. Ja, yeah, of course, the word of God says, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now he says, here yeah, in verse 11 of chapter 5, you became dull of hearing. I mean, yeah. In other words, you became lazy to hear. Yes. You became lazy to learn. Okay? Yeah. So as time passed, in the beginning is, is new and everything is new and every preaching is new. But then it's, okay, I'm just back in church. And then we become lazy to hear yeah. the truth of God's word. And this is where the problem starts to come in. And then um, the, a, a verse that continues with that, this idea to become lazy to hear. This we read in chapter 6. And uh, let us uh, read from verses 9 of chapter 6 up till verse 11. He says, But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. So here he speaks in faith. He was hoping that the uh, believers that he wrote to are still continuing and that they are not babes anymore. Yeah. So he's actually speaking in hope and in faith. Yes. For God is not unjust to forget your works and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and to the, uh, and do minister. So here he's talking about, we must minister to the saints. Sure. <laughs> we must minister to the believers and we, tend to forget our responsibility towards believers as well. Verse 11, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. Now this is where the thing yes. comes in. Diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Sure. So here he says we must have diligence to understand to be assured of our eternal hope until the end and not become sluggish so yeah. we must not become dull of hearing we must not become lazy in our personal relationship towards god and jesus christ so i say first never more uh yeah more geliefd is ons is aangaande jylle van beter dinge oortuig Dinge wat samenhang met die saligheid, al spreek ons ook so, want God is nie, um, as ek nou weer die recht heen? Ja, ja, ja. Want God is nie onrechtvaardig om jylle waar te vergeet nie, en die liefde arbeid wat jylle betoon het vir sy naam, omdat jylle die heiliges gedien het, en nog dien. Maar ons verlang dat elkeen van jylle die selfde eiwer mag toon, om te kom by die volmaakte zekerheid van die hoop, 
tot die einde toe, zodat so jullie niet traag worden, nie, maar navolgers van hulle wat hier geloof in langmoedigheid en um, erfgename van die belofte is. So, dit is so, eigenlijk zo so baie mooi om dit te zien dat ons met die ijver aan die dag leren, ons moet aangaan en ons moet aangaan om die te doen en te zoeken, die woord zelf te lezen, en te bid en al die dingen. want dan word je een navolger van die wat al um, die pad so stap in langmoedigheid en in geloof en wacht vir die, want hulle is al klaar erfgename van die belofte, so jy moet op die uitkom, so jy moet die ijver behou om niet terug te sak nie, baie keer kyk my so op naar andere mensen. en jy voel, kan ek nie ook daar wees nie, kan ek nie ook dit heen nie, yes. maar dis wat die woord sê, die eiwer, die die selfde eiwer moet in jou wees, om ook so aan te gaan, soos wat die, wat, wat die mense wat jy navolg, om ook daarbij uit te komen. en dit is baie keer, ek denk die groot probleem, dat wanneer dit niet vir een mens gedoen word nie, dan sak een mens terug, Mens kan nie net preke luister nie, mens kan nie net um, elke zondag en woensdag en vrijdag en wat ook al die preke luister en voel, jy gaan geestelik groei nie. Want jy moet ook navolgers word van die wat het doen, die wat eiwerig is in die evangelie. Nou, dan doen ons bijvoorbeeld de preke, so dan moet jy dit gaan lees verder in die woord en jy moet het gaan opzoeken en jy moet eiwerig raak om ook dit deel van jou leven te maak. En so begin jy groei. Ja, maar die groe ding is, hy sê daar, om volkome volkome sekerheid van die yes. hoop te kry tot die einde. So, Amen. ons moet seker raak oor ons eeuwige leven. So, we lose our surety, we lose our faith, we lose our insurance of our That's eternal right. hope, our assurance, not insurance, assurance, assurance yeah. of eternal hope. Um, because we do that, if uh, uh, because of that, uh, why it happens is because we become sluggish. And we must not become sluggish in our own life, yes. in our own diligence, in our own fervor, in our own zeal. We must make sure that we still have this eternal hope. We yes. must grow in that because he says we must become, uh, 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 show the, the same diligence to water insurance. So we must become uh, uh, um uh, grow, we must become an adult, yeah. we must grow in our uh, mature, uh, yeah, we must become mature thanks yes, a volwasse. lot ons yes. moet volwasse raak yes. in ons geloof en jy kan net volwasse raak wanneer jy aanhoud, yes. en wanneer daar baie dink keer dinge, nadat jy tot wedergeboorte gekom het, dan maak dinge jou moedeloos en jy voel, ach, is jy meer nie moeite waard nie, en jy sikkel en nou kom jy, jy beskielik te doen met sonde wat weer in jou leven inkom en al die type van dinge, dit was asof jy nooit weer gaan sonde doen nie, asof jy nooit weer gaan val en strykel nie, alles gaan nou net uitsoor, dit is een nieuwe leven wat jy nou in is, en dan ene skielik dan kom jy weer, dit kom het weer jou pad langs, en jy strykel dalk en jy val en wat ook al die geval mag wees, dan voel jy te leergesteld, en jy voel, ach jyre, dis jy meer die moeite waard nie en al die dinge, en dit is nou waar jy standvastigheid moet kry en sekerheid moet kry, om te weet, jyre, maar die woord sê, as ek geval en gestrykel het, kan ek na die, die vader toe gaan, en ek kan gaan vergifnis vraag, en die vader vergewe my onmiddellik, en ek kan weer aangaan in my geestelike leven, en soos jy die pad eiwerig stap, en doen wat die woord vir jou sê, dan begin jy die sekerheid kry in jou jou geloof, om nie net heel tyd, elke keer waar iets gebeur, terug te sak, en terug te val, en terug te staan nie, maar as die sekerheid begin deebrek, dan besef jy, jyre, maar ek moet begin standvastig raak, dit gaan gebeur, ek gaan nie die dinge nie ook kyk, maar hoe gaan ek die deerkom? Yes, so this is the, 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 the key of everything, now, as I've said, we can mention a lot of things, we can say a lot of things, this is the reason, but when we hit back at base, when we come back and we are honest with ourselves, yeah. how is our relationship with the Lord? Amen. How is our relationship? How diligently do we seek the Lord? How often do we pray? How long do we pray? Yeah. What, what, what time do we really spend with the Lord? Not just listening to to sermons. Sermons is very important in our day and life, but we cannot build our spiritual life on sermons alone. Ja, en het is wat my manne sê, hoe, hoe getrouw is ons in ons geestelike leven? Hoe is jou verhouding 
met die vader. Yes. Um, is jy in jou binnenkamer, hoe lang bid jy? Soek jy rechtig die Heere, of is het maar net een skietgebed hier, en een preek hier wat jy luister, en hier kort gedachte wat jy sien, en hier opbouwende vers, of wat ek al, of gaan jy werkelijk, en jy gaan soek die Heere, want al is jy een baba in jou wedergeboorte, na jou wedergeboorte, is dit van kardinale belang, dat jy die vader soek, dat jy met hom praat, dat jy die woord lees, dat dinge vir jou begin sin maak, en dat jy verhouding kry, met die jimmelse, met jou jimmelse vader, anders gaan jy begin terugzak, anders gaan jy begin terugval, want as daar nie verhouding is, nie is daar niks, yes, en dit is wat ons baie keer voel, maar jyre, daar is daar nou niks, en as, as jy nie self gaan moeite doen, en die vader gaan soek, in jou binnenkamer nie, gaan jy terugval, gaan jy voel, dit is nie meer die moeite waard nie, en dit is so dat ons wil baie keer net preke luister, en dit voel vir ons, dit is ons verhouding met die Heere, ek is nou bezig met die Heere, as ek nou al die preke luister, en preke luister, en preke luister, dit is nou my tyd dat ek met die Heere spandeer, maar dit is baie goed en wel, maar jy moet ook alleen by die Heere uitkom, en hom werkelijk soek, in jou binnenkamer, baie keer, en, en dit sien ons in kinders van die Heerense lewe, my man, dit is, dit is vinnige gebede, dit is nie moeite, want baie keer, as mense moet bid, dan is daar die woorde skat nie, yes. en dit is wat die mens achterkom, jyre, as en hoe meer tyd die mens in iemand sy, sy, sy teenwoordigheid spandeer, hoe meer leer jy die persoon ken, hoe meer gemakkelijk praat jy met die persoon, yes. en in die vaders sy teenwoordigheid is dit ook so, dat as jy nie woorde het om te bid nie, sê dit, jy spandeer die tyd in sy teenwoordigheid nie, yes. want dan jy kry nie woorde skat nie. Ja, yeah, and this is the thing, um, uh, sermons and teachings and this is what a, a, the Bible uh, teach us in Hebrews 10, that we must come together. We must gather together as sins as well. Yes. And this is what we call church. Yeah. Online gathering. We have an online gathering because our church are spread over all over the whole country and worldwide. So we cannot gather in one physical building. But here on the internet, on Facebook, book, book is, is a gathering. It is church. It's ecclesia. We come together. We hear the word of God, we hear the sermon, so that we can be encouraged and hear something <laughs> that can uh, uplift me and can maybe teach me something in my life. Now, what happens if we live from sermon to sermon? Now, say for instance, you came to the Lord, you start following this, you, you decide you're going to... Uh, um, uh, uh, um, we're going to join this congregation. Yes, we're going to join here. Now, we've we've got only, uh, it depends on something, but it uh, depends on uh, our outreach, etc., time, light sitting and so on. Mm. But we have about four services a week. Yes. Okay? Four services a week. But And if we live from service to service, you know what's going to happen? So now we have a Wednesday evening service. After a service for a while, and while the service is going on, you feel okay. Yeah. Because you hear the word of God. So what happens? Maybe half an hour or a day later, then you feel discouraged again. Yeah. So what happens now? You, we don't have another service. So now you start l listening to other services yes. to encourage you. Because in the meantime, since the last service, there were no personal closet relationship, relationship with the Lord. Yeah. So that sermon will fade away in your mind. So how many sermons do we need <laughs> really to encourage us uh, or to, to keep us encouraged, yes. if I can put it like that? Ja, so dit is so my man en ek bedoel, dit is, dit is die groot saak. Ons kom by mekaar en ons het hier die onderlinge bijeenkomste en alles hier op Facebook en ons um, stig mekaar en bou mekaar en al die dinge en op die groep en so aan en op een stadium, as jy nou klaar geluister het vanavond en jy sit hier af, dan voel jy nog goed en het voel nog so levend in jou hart en baie keer is dit ons een bykie te baal dier jou en so, want die woord is levend, dit maal so bykie nog dier jou en so aan. Maar nou begin het afplat, want nou het ons donderdag byvoorbeeld nie in dienst nie, daar keers weer vrijdag. Hmm. En nou kan jy daar ook nie inskakel nie, of waar jy geval mag wees. So nou begin het afplat, jy in jou gemoed. En baie keer dan voel die mens, joh, ek voel nou down. Ek voel nou nie lekker nie, ek voel nou weer in een depressie, ek voel nou weer in een gat. Ek voel nou nie meer lis om die Heere te dien nie, ek voel nou nie meer gemotiveerd om die Heere te dien nie. Want dit gaan baie keer oor, die preek moet jou motiveer om die Heere te bly dien. En op die einde van die dag, as die mens hier afsit, moet jy ook een verhouding met die Heere hee. Jy moet naar die vader te kom en ook hierdie 
spreek met hom, ook deurpraat, en hy sorteer, dit wat in jou hart gepraat het, dit wat in jou hart gedeel het, jyre, ek het besef, ek is laai, ek is traag, ek, 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 ek geen nie my alles nie, ek het nie so verhouding met u nie, nou begin jy met die vader praat, soos nou maak jy, doen jy verhouding met die heren, en dan gaan jy in die gat uitkom, dan gaan jy voel, jo, ek het weer kracht om aan te gaan, maar dit gaan kry in jou binnenkamer, yes. en dit is wat ons baie keer nalaat, dit gaan van preek na preek, en wanneer ons nou nie meer preek op morgen is, dan nou nie meer preek nie, dan voel jy, jo nie, ek het nou een preek nodig, dan gaan sit jy so my enige preek aan op, die, op YouTube, en dan voel jy nie, ek moet net weer bykie, bykie ge, gestig word die so, yes. en dit maak, dat die mens alle meer afvallig raak, in plaas daarvan om jou hemelse vader te gaan soek, en een verhouding met om te hees, so dat jy kan groei in hom. Ja, yeah, and it's quite amazing there in um, Hebrews 6, from verse 9, um, that he says there, you have been ministering to the saints and to each other. And, and yeah. when we look at the fruit tree earlier on in that Hebrew 6 um, um, chapter, he says the fruit are <coughs> for those who, the blessing of the fruit are for those who cultivate it as well. So fruit yeah. is not for the tree itself. Fruit is for others. Yeah. And this is also the context that he's talking about. Because yes. sometimes we want our fruit to be for ourselves. We just want everything for ourselves. If, yeah. you, if you want to be cultivated and you <clears throat> want to receive the word, then you must know the word wants to make you to grow so that you can bear fruit for who? For, for others. others. An apple tree, for instance. Let's just take an example. An apple tree doesn't bear apples for itself. Yeah. It bears apples for us to eat it. Those who cultivate it, they can eat of that apple. Yeah. So, and this is the thing, we want everything for ourselves. And this is eventually, this is what the Word of God says, you will not grow. Yeah. Um, because you don't understand to minister to the saints. And this is what he says in verses 10. He says, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Yeah. If we cannot encourage and minister to the saints, we are still spiritual babes. Yeah. And then we can get to the point, and this is the earnest warning of this. It doesn't say we are there yet, but we can get to the point yeah. where we can only bear thorns and thistles, that is briars. So what does a thorn tree do? He's Irritated, irritated. He, he pricks. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, feel irritated. <clears throat> yeah, you feel irritated. You, you feel. Don't come close to me. I've got this personal relationship with Lord. Don't uh, uh, come don't and help me. me. Yeah, don't bother <laughs> me. Don't come and help me. Don't teach me. I hear from the Lord. I know what the Lord is saying. Don't you have to tell me? Then you must know. You are still a babe in Christ, not mature, and you are the thorn tree that just want to stab and prick others as well. Sure, so dit is so my man, wanneer ons um, hierdie bome is, dra ons die vrug van ons self nie. Jy kan nie van jou self eet nie. En dit is baie keer die probleem. Wanneer ons in ons binnenkamer gaan en die woord lees en met ons vader praat nie, gaan jy niks kry om uit te deel nie. Gaan jy nie vrug heen nie. Daar gaan niks wees nie. Jy gaan nie die boom wees wat geen vrug dra nie. Jy gaan ook blare hee. Maar as die blare weggevat gaan word, gaan daar niks wees nie. En, en dit is baie keer die probleem, dat dit is waar ons ons vrug gaan kry, dit is waar ons um, kan uitdeel, wanneer jy in jou binnenkamer ingaan, en jy praat met die vader, en, hy, en ons, ons praat vir vandag daar oor, dat al wanneer een mens nuchterheid kry, is wanneer jy met die vader gaan praat in jou yes, binnenkamer. Amen. Baie keer sit jy met hierdie die emoties en dinge en het voel vir jou, ach, is nie meer die moeite waard en jy is moedeloos en jy verstaan dinge nie en wat ook al. En wanneer jy in jou binnenkamer ingaan en jy praat met jou hemelse vader, dan kom daar nuchter uit. Want het is dan asof die vader met jou ook praat en jou gemoed en jou siel praat die vader met jou dier die gees. En dan verstaan jy so my jy wees kereke ding, wat nie vir jou sin gemaakt het nie. En 
ons laat dit achter weer. So wat nou gebeur is, ons voel die geest praat op maniere met ons, en openbaar goed op maniere aan ons en swan, maar jy moet jou vader gaan soek wat in die verborgen is, so dat hy met jou kan praat, en jou nie openbaar vergelde, en so dat daar vrug na vore kan kom, want as jy nooit vrug uitdeel nie, sê dit, jy is nooit in jou binnenkamer nie, of jy lees nooit die woord nie, so die woord praat nooit met jou nie, of jy ontvang niks in jou binnenkamer nie, en dit is baie keer wat die mens voel, jy is dood, Jy kan nie aangaan in jou geestelike leven nie, jy valt terug in jou geestelike leven, jy is nie vervuld nie, want wanneer jy begin uitdeel, wanneer jy vrug begin uitdeel aan ander om te eet, dan raak jy vervuld en opgewon en blij en jy voel so my, wow, ek beteken iets vir die broederskap, ek beteken iets vir die heiliges, ek bedien die woord aan hulle, en dan begin jou geestelike leven verander. So, that is quite amazing, now when we read here in Romans 12, Um, from verse 10, we can go there to Romans 12, actually from verse 9 um, up till verse 12, 13. Um, Romans 12 from verses 9. Say, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. So love without hypocrisy. Sure, so, that is quite amazing. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, yes. in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence. Now that lagging is to be lazy, to be slothful um, sure. in diligence, not to be slothful and lazy in diligence, sure. fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. So we must continue steadfast in prayer. If we don't continue steadfast in prayer, yeah. it is impossible to be uh, on fire for the Lord. It's impossible yes. to encourage other people. It's impossible to stand up in your life. Yes. Because Jesus Christ says, go in your closet and spend time there with your Father. Oh. And your Father who sees there in that closet, He will reward you openly. Yes. We want a reward. We want God to hear us. We want God to uplift us. And now we are talking to us as Christians that feel that we always need encouragement. We have yeah. fallen away. We don't feel happy anymore. We just carry on on feelings because it's not about feeling. But if we cannot encourage, if we cannot go into in our closet and speak with our Father, because if I believe God will reward me in the open, the condition is that I must go and seek Him in the closet, yes. in my inner chamber, in my private. I must go and seek Him there, if I believe He can help me. Now, if I seek Him there, He will help me. But where, whatever I get in my inner room, in my private, I get it to encourage the saints as well, wow. to minister to the gospel to the lost as well. Wow, And if we don't do that, how can we just receive encouragement? Because the word of God says, do to others what you want to be done to yourself. Yes. Do you want encouragement? Do you want upliftment? Do you want deliverance from certain sinful characters and sinful habits? Go and minister to those in the brotherhood that also suffer that same thing. Go and encourage your brother. Go and minister to him as well. But if we don't have that personal relationship, God cannot reward us in the open. Wow, that's very mooi. Hmm. Romeine 12 vers 9, Laat die liefde ongefeins wees, verafske wat slag is, hang die goeie aan. Yes. So die liefde moet ongefeins wees, dit moet real wees. <laughs> real, die real <laughs> moet kwaar. real love wees. Yes. Wees hartig teen oor mekaar met broederlief, broeder, broederlijke liefde. Die een moet die aan voortgaan in eerbetoning. Wow, is dit nie mooi nie. Dit het nou somme van ons in my hart gepraat. Yes. Wanneer jy iemand voortgaan in eerbetoning, dan is dit een ander liefde. Dit is een real liefde yes. wat jy dan teen oor jou broeders het. Wees nie traag in die eiwer nie. Wees vierig van gees, dien die Heere. Ja. En dit is baie keer die probleem. Ons raak 
moedeloos. Ons raak traag, ons is nie meer eiwerig nie, jy is nie meer lis nie. As jy my nie contact nie, ek gaan jou nie contact nie. As jy nie met my gaan praat nie, ek gaan nie met jou praat nie. En dis baie keer die attitude wat ons as kinders van die heren inneem. En wanneer die mens die deel van die lichaam bly en uh, met ons bly praat en uitsorteer en swaan nie, gaan jy naderaan soos dood voel en terugval en nie meer deel wees van die broederskap nie. Hy sê verbly jylle in die hoop, wees geduldig in die verdrukking, vol hart in die gebed. En dit is my so mooi om te denk, verbly jylle in die hoop. Nou ons hoop is die ewige lewe, ons wat ons daan verbly in die Heere Jesus Christus, wat ons siel gered het, om te maak dat ons jimmel toe kan gaan. Hy sê wees geduldig in die verdrukking, so op ons as kinders van die Heere se pad, kom daar geweldige verdrukking. En dit laat ons ook terugzak. Die eerste mens wat jou teestaan of wat jou verwerp, voel jy ach, hier is nie meer die moeite waard nie. Dit is nie meer die moeite waard om die heren te doen nie. Ek gaan nou die heren los, want dit is net moeilikheid. Dit was baie beter in die wereld geweest, want dit het my niemand my tegenstaan nie. En dit is hoe een mens begin voel. Maar hy sê so mooi, hy sê gewees geduldig in die verdrukking. So aanvaard het, kry dit lief, wees deel, laat dit deel raak van jou leven. Voel hard in die gebed. Nou al hoe jy kan vandaan, die verdrukking, geduldig wees in die verdrukking, is dier gebed. Jy praat met jou vader al oor, jy is blij oor jou verdrukking, want jy besef, jyre, dit help my om die eeuwige hoop te behou. En in alles wat in die evangelie gebeur, maak dit dat jy vasthou, maak dit dat jy dit nie terugsak nie. En dit is so mooi om dan te denk, maar ons moet vol hart in gebed, anders gaan jy by niks van hierdie goed uitkom nie. Jy gaan so gauw terugval, dit is nie as een grap nie. Ja, because you see here in verse 12, it said rejoicing in hope. Sure. We lose hope, and this is what um, Hebrews 6 uh, also um, encourages us in verses, uh, that what we have read in verse um, 11 and 12, that we must grow, we must become mature, we must become diligent to the full assurance. We, we must get to the fullness. That fullness is maturity. To the fullness assurance of hope. We lose our eternal hope. This hope is not hope that tomorrow will be a better day. This is not a hope he's not talking about. Because we have hope. Ach, tomorrow everything will be different. Ach, tomorrow is... We have hope only for tomorrow. That our circumstances will change. This hope he's speaking here is our eternal hope. Regardless of our circumstances, because here in, as my wife, uh, wife has already read here in uh, Afrikaans Bible, distributing to the needs of the, um, rejoicing patiently in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Now, verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. If we don't have, if, if, if we don't pray, it means we don't have uh, the full assurance of our eternal hope. We don't rejoice yeah. in our mm-hmm. eternal hope because we fall then under our circumstances because sometimes we just pray most of the times that our circumstances will change. Not for us to become to, uh, to, to get to the full assurance of our eternal hope because we can die here yeah, under the pressure of tribulation and if you have continued in this full assurance then your soul will be saved. Yes. It doesn't, even if your circumstances hasn't changed, your soul is saved. And this is the encouragement. And if you read, and this is what he said in Hebrews, if you read even from verses, uh, from chapter 4, it's all about this tribulation path that we have to walk. And in that, we must have this relationship with the Lord so that we can Keep our eternal hope alive and rejoice in that. Jo, dit is amazing, my man, want baie keer verloor ons hoop, wanneer ons dier die dinge gaan wat ons voel, ons hoop moet wees dat ons omstandig jyre verander. En baie keer is ons so gerig net op dit, en ons bid net vir ons omstandig jyre dat dit moet verander, want ons voel disgeloof. 
Yes. Ek voel ek het geloof dat my omstandighede moet verander. En wat is die geloof wat ons moet hee? Een geloofsekerheid vir my eeuwige lewe. Een yes. geloofsekerheid vir yes. my eeuwige hoop. Wow, so dit gaan nie oor, ek moet geloof hee dat my omstandighede verander nie. Ek moet geloof hee om te volhard door die einde toe, so dat my seel gereed kan word. So yes. ek moet kan vasthou. Ek moet sê, jyre, dit maak nie saak wat my omstandighede is nie. Daar gaan elke dag drukking wees. En, en ons en as, ons as kinders van die Heere sy lewe, die druk is nooit weg nie. As jy nie drukking het, jy moet jy begin vraag vraag, <laughs> en sê Heere, wat is fout met my? Yes. Want as mens in die ochtend opstaan, as jy gaan slaap, is hy druk daar. Daai verdrukking is daar, daai benauwdheid is daar, yes. en jy besef, Heere, my siel moet nie skade leid nie, my siel moet gered word, Heere, ek moet nie ewige lewe ingaan, ek kan nie terugsak in die wereld nie, so daai benauwdheid is die heel tyd daar, Amen. en daai teestand is die heel tyd daar, teenoor die woord van die Heere, Amen. maar in dit, moet ons groei in geloof, in geloofsekerheid, yes. om te sê, Heere, dit maak nie saak, wat so omstandig hier al my is, wat so drukking, wat so verdrukking, wat so um, vervolging, of wat ook al daar is nie, want as jy kan vasthou, maak die saak wat op die aarde was nie, gaan jou siel gereed word, gaan jy die eeuwige lewe in, en dit is hoe ons geloof groei in die Heere. Yes, and we can encourage you with um, why we say you must hold on, on you must you must not pray that your circumstances change, but you must pray that the Lord will encourage you Amen. to endure your circumstances. Now that circumstances is also called tribulations and uh, uh, temptations and trials and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to talk about it now. The hope why, why it is important that we are under this pressure. But before we're going to get there, let us just read here in Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3, and this is quite an amazing uh, verse, but we're going to read from verse 12, uh, Hebrews 3 from verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be a, a, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Yoch, so, uh, uh, unbelief sure. is is, is uh, evil heart. Yoch, it's scary. I just, it just pops out to me now. Mm. But exhort. Now that exhort is to instruct, comfort, summons, call up. So the exhort explains a lot of things. One another daily, while it is called today, lest anyone you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So he says daily, we must exhort, we must instruct, we must comfort, we must summons, we must call upon sure. daily on each other, not uh-huh. the world outside, on each other. We <laughs> must remind each other. Philippians Three, uh, where Paul says, he says, well, it is not grievous, it's not tedious, it's not sluggish for me. It's not the effort to keep on writing the same things to you, because that gives you uh, a, a surety yeah. of faith. That gives you security. Yeah, that's why I say in Africa, it's as if my last yeah. om you learn all this to Dit is so mooi, dit is nie vir hom lastig nie, hy sal bly herinner, want allemaal moet die eeuwigheid ingaan. So dit is so ons as predikers ook voel, dat ons sal jy bly herinner, en ons sal ons self bly herinner, aan hier die, um, hier die uh, sekerheid, yes. om ons eeuwige lewe in te gaan. Yes, now let us read verse 14, for we have become partakers, and this is awesome, we say we are part of Christ. But how do we become partakers and stay partakers of Jesus Christ? For we have become partakers of Christ if, this is the condition, we are part of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. So here we must continue in the same manner as what we have started with. Sure. Sure. And that is our first love. Yo, this morning. That is a big <laughs> challenge to us. And the only way to continue in that is to have this diligent, fervent prayer life with the Lord. Wow. And see, it's on Hebrews 12, um, verse 3, verse 12. Sorg daarvoor, broeders, dat daar nie miskien in een van julle een bose en ongeloofige hart is, deerdat hy van die levende God afvallig word nie. So, as jy afvallig raak, het jy een bose en afvallige hart, jo. Hy sê, maar vermaan mekaar elke dag, 
so lang as dit vandag genoem word, so dat niemand van jullie dier die verleiding van sonde verhard word nie. Ja. So ons moet mekaar elke dag herinner, vermaan, die woord um, predik, so dat ons kan verstaan en ons kan hoor, en dit is nie net ons op die lucht nie, dis op die groep, op die broederskap, moet ons mekaar ook herinner aan hierdie dinge, dit is so mooi om na aan te denk, want ons het deelgenote van Christus geword, as ons net die begin van ons vertrouwe, tot het einde toe onwrikbaar vasthoud. Hy is mooi wat hy sê, hy sê, as ons die begin van ons vertrouwe, tot die einde toe onwrikbaar vasthoud. So die eerste liefde wat jy gekry het met jou wedergeboorte, wat jy omhels het, moet jy behou, dier jou hele geestelike pad, tot die einde toe. En dit is die groot challenge in ons leven, dat ons moet aanhou om die Heere te soek en te dien in die eiwer en oprechtheid en opgewonenheid wat ons van die begin af gehad het. En wanneer een mens nie die verhouding met die vader het nie, dan begin een mens terugzak in jou geestelike leven. Dan verval al die eerste liefde en opgewonenheid wat jy van die begin af ontvang het by die Heere. Want as jy was tot wedergeboorte kom nie die hele wereld verander. Alles verander, jy sien anders, jy dink anders, jy voel anders, jy wil alles anders doen, as wat jy gedoen het. En dan soos wat jy die pad stap, dan sak jy terug. En dis wat die Heere vanavond met ons praat. As jy so gaan aanhou, gaan jy nie kan aanhou om die Heere te dien nie. Ja, and it is quite amazing that we must be reminded that because sin hardens us and then we become rebellious. And that is when we start falling away. And sometimes we just have a outward appearance of your Christian faith yeah. and it's not from the heart anymore and this is the problem and this is what the Lord says here that we must if we uh, uh, are to be partakers of Christ sure. we must hold to that confidence and uh, if you read through the entire Hebrews uh, uh, from here as well that every child of God he says if you want to be godly live a godly life a fruitful godly life, you yeah. will be persecuted. Not yes. maybe, you will be persecuted. Your name will be, you will be scoffed. Your name will be thrown, uh, 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 will be mocked against and you will be false accused, yes. etc. You will go through that thing. As a child of God, it will definitely happen. Yes. And that's why we need each other's encouragement to endure through this uh, 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 circumstances in trials that we uh, have on earth. Dit is so my man, ons, ons wat die Heere, jy wil nog net vruchtbaar lewe, jy wil nog net, jy wil nog net die Heere dien, yes. dan is die vervolging al daar, yes. alles is al daar, jy word al klaar vervolg, en jou naam word weggegooi vir iets wat sleg is, jy word skil, um, ons skildag, um, <laughs> Rarig. Jy word beskuldig, valslik beskuldig. Valslik beskuldig. Valsly accused, yes. So al die dinge kom tegen die mens, en die woord skryf het vir ons, dit gaan definitief so wees. Daar is nie eers two ways about it nie. En ons as kinders van die Heere moet dit lief kry. Ons moet dit aanvaar en sê, Heere, baie dankie vir dit. En wat sê die woord vir my? Dat wanneer ek dier hierdie dinge gaan, dan ris Godse heerlijkheid op my. Sy kracht, sy heerlijkheid, sy maaie stuit is by my teenwoordig, hy weet van my, en dit is wat ons baie keer wil wegstoot, en voel dit nie moeite waard om die Heere te dien, want ek word dan nou, in die wereld word ek verstoot, maar die Heere sy heerlijkheid, ris wel op jou, wanneer dit gebeur, so as die mens dit kan verstaan, en dit is ongelukkig, mens moet die woord lees, anders ga jy nie weer het staan daar nie, en dit is die volharding, dit is die eiwer wat die mens aan die dag moet lees, jyre, ek moet die woord lees, en ek moet die woord begin ken, en ek moet weet wat die staan, want nou staan dit in die woord van die vervolging, en die verdrukking, en al die dinge, nou het ek het nog nie gelees nie, nou voel ek, dat is fout met my, wat nou net ek gaan nie deur, maar wanneer ek die woord lees en begin verstaan en opgewonne raak en deel het aan die broederskap en ook my deel lever en die ander opbouw en stig en dan hoor ek nie by hulle, hulle herinner my, hoor die daas verdrukking, daas benauwtheid, daas al die dinge en so stap ons in die pad en met sekerheid en dit is ons geloof groei in die jyre. Yes, now why must we eh continue in trials and tribulations, why must we be uh, steadfast and endure it? Now, when we go through tribulations, we go through trial, we go through reproaches, we go through false accusations, 
um, we get discouraged and we start falling back. We yeah. start falling away. But I want to encourage you today. And today we had an amazing discussion with Marty and Donnie here. If you take David, David in the Old Testament, um, we know he wrote a lot of the Psalms, not all, but let's talk about him because he's most generally uh, known as the one who wrote most of the Psalms. How did that Psalms came about? And this is what we lose, we don't understand. All those Psalms that you read, every single one, even if, even if someone else has wrote it, but mainly David, he were in a trial. He were in a, 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 a tribulation. He were persecuted. That's the word I'm looking for. He were persecuted even by the king of Israel. He's like the president of our country. Personally persecuted David. And in that trial, in that uh, um, persecution, he cried out to God. He didn't run away and, and just say to himself, Ah, oh, tomorrow will be a better day. No, he knew Tomorrow won't be a better day. Amen. If tomorrow will come. <laughs> he, he called out to the Lord. He had a personal relationship with the Lord. And he went and he called out and he prayed in his heart and with his voice and whatever he did, the way he did it. And in that tribulation, in that pressing, the word of God came out in that psalm. He wrote, uh, you'll see a lot of the Psalms, it's like if it's, if, if he wrote about, if he wrote about a certain physical circumstances, and then all of a sudden there's prophecy about Jesus Christ. Some of those Psalms are entirely about Jesus Christ, and some of those are about the physical and the spiritual. But in that persecution, in that trial, in that pressing, the word of God came to him and he uttered it and they wrote it down so we can have it as the word of God. Because in the trial, when he called to God, the spirit of God, and this is what we miss. That's why God says, when you are persecuted, the spirit of God is there with you. Amen. But you and us must go and pray. We must have this relationship with the Lord. We must call upon the Lord. <coughs> So that the Spirit of God in us can comfort us and open the Word of God to us. So that we can understand something spiritually and not something carnally. Sure. That's how I am going to try to do it like a word I can tell. Yes, I can tell my heart. Praise so yeah, as we look at the Psalms, and I think that this is a big problem with our kinders of the Lord. Why are we so afraid? What do we learn from this whole first? Psalms. En dit voel, dit moet vir jou hierdie troos wees. Mm. En jy kry jou self eindelijk so'n bykie jammer as jy Psalms lees en jy denk, jo, die Heere denk nou so aan my en al die dinge. Maar as mys mooi kyk, hoe Psalms geskryf is, en ons kyk nou na David, die meeste van die Psalms is hierom geskryf. Hy was vervolgd dier Saul. En hy het hierdie alle gedrukking en vervolging en persing deurgegaan, elke dag. Maar in dit het hy die Heere gaan soek. En dit het hy met die vader gaan praat. En op die oude van die dag, wat het gebeur? Das, die psalms het uit om uitgebreed, uit sy binneste uit, yeah. uit, sy, uit sy hart uit. Want dit was een benauwdheid. Mm. En terwijl hy so een benauwdheid was, kon die woord van Heere so deurkom en deurbreek, mm. so dat ons dit vandag kan lees. En wat het daar deurgekom? Baie van dit wat, wat hy geskryf het, was wel was hy fysische omstandighede wat hy op die oomlik gevoel het. Maar baie van dit was profetiese woord oor die Heere Jesus Christus, wat uit sy hart uitgekom het, wat ons kan lees en wat ons kan sien in die Heere Jesus Christus in vervulling gekom het. So wat gebeur wanneer ons dier die geweldige drukking en dinge gaan? Die woord van die, as ons die, die Heere gaan soek, en ons gaan praat met hom, en ons gaan gebring ons saak voor hom, wat gebeur? Die drukking maak, dat jy, jou verhouding met die Heere, raak net amazing. Dis asof jy, hierdie amazing verhouding, hierdie vertrouwensverhouding met, yes. met die vader het, want jy kan hom vertrouwen met alles in jou wees. Wat gebeur? En dat jou hart breek, ne? Ja, dit breek oop, so, dit maak oop, 
vir God sy liefde, dit maak oop vir sy woord, dit maak oop dat hy met jou kan praat, ja. en kan deel, en jou hart kan uitsorteer, so dat hy nichterheid kan kom, en ook in dit, wanneer jy die woord lees, dier drukking, en in verdrukking, wat moet gebeur met die woord, dit moet oopmaak, yes. dit moet vir jou duidelik raak, in die druk en verdrukking, en dit is wat ek en my man besef, hierdie hele bediening, tot vandag toe waar jy dit hier sien, het was gebore in druk, en verdrukking, en vernedering, alles wat die ergste kon gebeur, het gebeur, so dat hierdie woord kon oopmaak, ek nou die dag toe ek so bid, en ek bid so oor my man, so, so, ek het net so gevoel om net so lekker te bid oor sy leven, en tot waar het vandag is en so aan, en ek het daar besef, jyre, dit was vernedering, op vernedering, op vernedering, op vernedering, en so is die hele bediening gebore, yes. want dit is hoe die woord oopgebreek, en verstaanbaar geword het vir ons, dit was glad nie, in verhooging nie, yes. dit was nie in voorspoed nie, yes, dit was in die geweldige, as het die financiële drukking was nie, was dit vervolging van, yes, van, die, van die kerk af, was dit vervolging van die kinders van die Heere af, en al die dinge, en was dit die vernedering, want my man is juist te slecht om te werk, en jy weet nie wat in jou leven aangaan, en al die dinge, en hy moes het deurgaan, terwijl hy die woord van die Heere bestudeer het, en uitgesorteer het in sy hart, en in sy binnenkamer moes deurbreek, so hy druk was die hele tyd daar, hy oor was die hele tyd op hom, hy verachting was op hom gewees, so wat gebeur in dit, die woord van die Heere word gebore in jou binneste, dit breek oop in jou binneste, jou hart breek oop vir die Heere, so dat jy die woord beter kan verstaan, so dit is eindelijk van ons so bemoediging, dat wanneer jy dier die druk en verdrukke gaan, moet nie moedeloos raak nie, gaan soek die Heere, gaan soek om in jou binnenkamer, lees juist die woord, so dat dit vir jou kan oorbreek. Um, the word of God says he lives in heaven, and he lives in by the broken hearted and the contrite spirit. Yo. So what does trials and tribulations and persecution do? It breaks our heart. Yo. It brings us to a point of despondentness, if there is a wow. word like that. We just feel we are worthless. Isn't it so? But we can be like Saul and keep our courage to ourselves and keep ourselves strong and get through the circumstances and say, I, have, I, be, uh, I, came a, uh, I came a stronger man on the other side. Or we can humble ourselves like David did. And go to the Lord and say to him, Lord, this is too much for me. I cannot handle this. And call out to him. In that broken hearted state of David, what happened? The Spirit of God, and I want you to grasp it today. Sure. The Spirit of God, because he heart, his heart were broken. So what happens? How does God live, live, live in us? Is through his Spirit. And we know in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Spirit as something permanent in them. But at times it were there and it yeah. manifested in them. So while David were in this broken heart and discouraged state, he went to the Lord. He wasn't like Saul that just kept himself strong and said, I'm going to become a stronger man on the other side. No, he humbled himself. Yes. And then the Spirit of God came and dwelt in him. Wow. And revealed the word of God in him. Sure. So the entire Bible that you are reading, even the Psalms, yes. are born and came through trials and tribulations Amen. and fiery trials and fiery tribulations. Yes. This is the word that we are reading. And when we read this word, the word stays a closed book to us. Why? Because we don't love tribulation. We don't go to the Lord in times of need and tribulation and persecution. And when we go to the Lord in that time, He will open up His Word. The most precious gem yes. on earth is the Word of God. And this is why we don't understand the Word of God. Because we pray that our circumstances must change. We don't seek the Lord 
for because he is God and Amen. seek an answer within the word of God because if you want an answer in the word of God the Holy Spirit must make it alive today yes. and the only way God's Spirit can make it alive today is when your heart is broken wow. and you have a contrite spirit you are humble and you say my God and my Lord uh, this is too much for me yes. and you start seeking the Lord and my wife and myself we have testimony we see God for a temporal thing uh, and he starts opening the word there uh, and he starts opening the word there uh, because the Holy Spirit is in you hallelujah Amen. when you fall on your face and you say my yes. God uh, uh, please yes. help me and then God Amen. just reveals Amen. his word and reveals Amen. his word and now and your circumstances doesn't change yes. at that very moment because now you have a contrite spirit you have a broken heart you have a heart where God's spirit can reveal himself to you because the word of God can oh, only be revealed man. in a broken and humble heart. Wow. And this is why we go through tribulation. Because God must get us out of the way. Yes. He must break our heart. And if your heart breaks and we understand our word, then our mind and our thinking yeah. and the way we live and the way we talk start to change in our hearts. But if we keep to our tribulation and say, no, I'll become a stronger man on the other side. Believe me. This is the, this is the warning from the scriptures we've read tonight. It, we will just become harder and harder and harder. Wow. God's word is meek. Wow. God's word is love. And that love can only be manifested. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Spirit. If our heart is broken oh. before God. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. We must. Ons met verdrukking lief kry. Amen. Ons we must not. Yeah, 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 we God, please change my heart that I can understand your word. Sure. Not just switch on YouTube for another uh, uh, sermon. But go and read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Go and prayerfully read your Bible. Go and call out to the Lord and say, oh. Lord, it's getting too much for me. Sure. And then God. Because this entire Bible, we can't get away from it. It is as what it is. We cannot change it. If this entire Bible is written by people who were in tribulations and trials every single day of their lives. How can I use this word of God to justify a fleshly, sinful, luxurious life? That's so it's impossible. That's why our newborn in Christ. That's why you go to tribulation. Because God wants to reveal him to you through his word as well. Sure. Dit is een rechtvaardige oordeel. Amen. Dit is een mooi wat die woord sê. Wanneer jy tot wedergeboorte kom en jy gaan dier hierdie dinge, dan voel dit jy onrechtvaardig. Maar is God is een rechtvaardige oordeel. Amen. Dit is so amazing. Hy het jou so lief. Hy wil Amen. jou in die hemel. Hy wil jou die sekerheid gee. Van dit is die pad wat jy stap. En dit is so mooi om te denk, dat ons gaan die selfde leidingspad stap, as wat Jesus gestap het. Amen. Ons, Jesus het geleer, Dier die gehoorzaamheid. En wat hy die gehoorzaamheid gedoen het, het om naar die kruis toe geleid. Geleer uit wat hy geleid het. Yes, en hy het geleer uit wat hy geleid het. En die gehoorzaamheid van hom, het om geleid naar die kruis toe. Yes. En dit is baie keer die gehoorzaamheid wat jy het in die Heere. Dit leid jou baie keer in die druk en verdrukking in. In die leiding in. En dit is wat moet gebeur. So dat jou hart kan oopmaak. Want die blijdschap wat jou voorgehou word, die eeuwige leven, die hoop, die zekerheid in die Heere. Wow, dit moet maak dat ons hierdie pad stap elke dag. Dit moet maak dat jy vol hart tot die einde toe. Want hmm. Jesus het dit verdra, omdat hy geweet het wat sy blijdskap daar in die hemel is. Wat, wat om voorgehou is. So ons stap uit pad en ons besef Heere, as ons vol hart op hierdie pad, is daar eeuwige leven wat vir my wacht. Daar is die hemel wat vir my wacht. En dit is alles die moeite waard. Amen. Dis alles die moeite waard. En omdat, baie keer, omdat ons as kinders van die Heere weer gebore word en ons dadelijk, ek kan vir jy sê, onmiddellik is hy druk daar. Amen. Onmiddellik 
is die druk daar, dit word het baie keer so'n bykie verdoesel oor die aandag wat jy krijgt vir die tyd, yes. maar wanneer dit weg is, dan ervaar jy die druk, jy ervaar die verdrukking en benauwdheid en al die dinge, en die leidingspad wat jy moet stap, want net om hierdie ou mens af te lees, is een leidingspad, yes. om nie meer sonde te doen, is een leidingspad, Amen. om gehoorzaam te wees, om te sê, yes. jyre, ek gaan nie meer sonde doen nie, ek gaan, ek vraag jy vir verlossing, ek Amen. wil verlos raak vir my sonde en om my ongerechtigheid, is een leidingspad, Amen. en dit is baie keer een geweldige leidingspad, maar dit lei ons na die eeuwige lewe Amen. dit lei ons na die opgewonheid van Heere, ons kan nie dien om die eeuwigheid in te gaan so mys moet nie moedeloos raak nie as hy druk en verdrukking en leiding en al die dinge daar is en jy voel die pressure is heavy op jou, breek jou hart oop voor die Heere en sê Heere, ek wil hier my hart oopbreek dat jy met my kan praat en deel, wow, dit is amazing yeah, God doesn't work in a haughty and boastful, yeah. self-righteous heart. Verneerig. And we are like that. We all are like that. We all want attention. We all, 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 all want to slap on the, uh, shoulder. on the shoulder and so forth and so forth. But God doesn't work like that. Jesus came as a servant. Yes. And our trials and tribulation must lead us so that we can understand what it means to be a servant. Amen. And this is what the Holy Spirit confirms. This is what the Holy Spirit impresses on us. And then, and then only, the Word of God will become alive to us. Sure. It will open up to us. Because God's Spirit opens up His Word that were born and came forth and were conceived sure. in tribulation will also reveal to you the written Word. You can read His letters. You can know it out of your mind. Every letter, every every verse, but doesn't mean it's alive. Yes. It becomes alive through the Holy Spirit. That is why we as children of God, you, for a few days, you get all this t- t- attention and you're happy with it. But God immediately starts to walk the road with you, this path with you. Sure. In trials and tribulation. You don't have one day off. Trust me, I'm <laughs> saving the Lord more than 30 years now. There's not one single day that I can say, honestly, I was just relaxed. Yeah, I tried to that. out of my flesh sometimes. But inside it was this mewling of emotions all the time. Yes. That I must come to the Lord and sort out my life with Him. And when I'm busy doing that, the Word opens up. Sure. And when the Word opens up, it starts working in me, and it starts to change the way I think and do and will. Wow. Is sure. that amazing? That is awesome. That is so my man. As ek nie een dag af in die evangelie, want in die Heere dien is die druk constant daar, van dat jy die dag tot weder geboorte gekom het. En ek denk, jy kan met my saamstem vanaan. Amen. Ek denk, baie sy pad begin al reeds met soveel <laughs> moeilikheid, wanneer jy tot weder yes, geboorte kom. Amen. En jy, dit gaan nie verander nie. Nah. Dit, dit, al wat gebeur is, jy raak volwasse. Yes. Jy leer om het te hanteer. Yes. Jy leer om nie terug te sak en terug te val. Jy leer om te vol hart in die woord. In plaas daarvan dat jy oorgee aan jou emoties en hoe jy voel en denk en allemaal wat jy om jou is en al die dinge en toeg jy aan die druk. So jy raak volwasse en dit is wat die woord sê, ons moet uiverig wees, ons moet yes. vasthou, ons moet vol hart in gebed, so dat jy door die volwassenheid kan groei, so dat jou geloof kan groei in die Heere. Wat is die geloof? Dit is om vasthou, maak nie saak wat om jou gebeur nie. Maak nie saak van jou omstandighede nie, maak nie saak van die druk nie, dis geloof, om vast te staan, om vast te hou, in die Heere, nie net om jou omstandighede gechange te kry, nie net om morgen geld te kry, en jy het al gebid en gesê, Heere, asjeblief vir my geld, en ons geld nie, dis nie geloof nie, maar om vast te staan, ongeag, wat ever jou pad voorbij kom, dis geloof, dis om daan te geloof. Ja, en if you seek him like that, whatever, uh, physical, financial, whatever, trials and tribulations, it, God says, I will help you that. Seek me. Amen. And I will help you with that. And there's a lot of people that can testify of it. They seek the Lord. And the Lord helped them in, in the temporal financial as well. And I just want to mention it as a conclusion thought. Here from verse 13. It is as if 
the, the writer here jumps over to uh, uh, something about Abraham. But if you can read from verse 13 here in yes. Hebrews 6, we're not going to read it. I'm just going to say it to you and you can go read it in your own time. Here he describes, starts describing that um, full assurance of hope that Abraham had without becoming sluggish. And eventually, the fact that he stayed with the Lord and that he didn't uh, fall back and he st stayed believing in the Lord, eventually what happened? Jesus Christ came. So his faith were rewarded at the end of the day with the coming of Jesus Christ that can uh, deliver us from the power of darkness. Ja, so that's why he talks here about Abraham further and the belofte that he has made. And I think always that the belofte is seeing him here on earth. As the Lord now for you is here, then it's the belofte that now for you has come. But what is this? This is the Lord Jesus Christ, because Abraham had a city for you. Waarvan God die bouwmeester en oprichter is. Hy het nie een stad op die aarde verwacht nie. Hy het nie voorspoed op die aarde verwacht nie. Hy het besef. Daar moet verlossing kom, want elke in sy siel in die oud testament was vastgevang in die dode reik. Hulle kon nie gered word nie, hulle kon nie verlos word nie. En die belofte van verlossing en vrymaking en redding, dit is wat Abraham verwacht het. Dit is waar hy vastgehou het. En dit is op die ouwe peloe en dier die Heere Jesus Christus wat gekom het. En hulle ei die dode reik uit kom haal het. Ei die gevangenis uit kom haal het. So dat hulle die eeuwige lewe kon het gaan. So dit was die belofte waarvoor hulle gewacht het. En hulle het doodgegaan. Sonder om het te verkry. So dit was nie een aardse belofte hier nie. Hulle het doodgegaan sonder om te verkry, so hulle siele was dode reik toe. Maar, toe kom die Heere Jesus Christus, en hy gaan verlos hulle uit die dode reik uit. Wow, is dit nie amazing nie. En hy verlos ons mense siel uit die, uit die, hou vast van die duivelheid wat hy gehad het, oor ons siel, met die sonde wat ingekom het in die begin. So dit is waarvoor Abraham gewag het, dit is waarvoor hy geleef het, en dit is die belofte wat hy op die hand voor gekryg gekry het, en dit is die geloof wat ons moet vasthou, Heere, Ek gaan die eeuwige lewe ingaan. Maak nie saak wat sy pad ek hier moet stap. Ek gaan die eeuwigheid in saam met u. En dit is my belofte. Ja, dit is die end, die core, die power of the promise that Abraham received. It wasn't an inheritance here on earth. Because Hebrews 11 says, Abraham died without receiving the promise. Now here he says he received the promise. How must we understand it? So at the end of the day, to receive the promise, what the promise did he receive? At the end of the day, the promise of eternal life uh, when Jesus Christ came. Amen. But wh while he wasn't there, when he died, the promise of salvation wasn't there yet. But eventually it led to Jesus Christ that came and also took them out of, uh, out of Hades, out of hell, into heaven. And this is the promise. This is what he's uh, is writing here. This is the promise that Abraham received. Because from here on, he talks about how Jesus Christ is the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And here he describes the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So this is the promise wow. that Abraham received. Because of his faith, Jesus Christ came. Wow. Now because of your faith, and if you can hold on to your faith, you will inherit eternal life. You can have the promise. Not like, like Abraham. You can have the promise. Yes, want ons sê die slaag gered uit die duisternis uit. Yes. Wow, en ons kan die jammel ingaan. We must Dis just hold amazing. fast to it. Ja, ons moet vast hou. Ons moet vol hard door die einde toe. Jy kan wacht, wacht val, jy kan terugval. En dan is het baie moeilik om weer terug te keer. Yes. So dit is ons... Um, opgewonnenheid vanavond, en dit is die motivering vanavond, en dit is wat ons weer wil bring vanavond, dat ons hoop, en ons moet aan om die Heere te heen, maak nie saak wat om ons gebeur nie, want dit is hoe jou geloof groei in die Heere, dan val jy nie sommer weg vir elke ding nie, dan raak jy volwassa, jy raak standvastig, jy raak onbeweging, jy verstaan die verskil tussen goed en kwaad, en dit is om volwassa te raak in die Heere, loof die Heere. Amen. Thank you that you were tuned in and also spent time with us. And uh, we praise the Lord. We see there's a lot of answers, encouragement this evening. Yes. Um, please go afterwards for your own soul, for your own sake. 
Go and pray, go and have a relationship, a closet relationship with the Lord, and He will strengthen you and, f f and encourage you further and deliver you and also whatever you want to do with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you. That is our opportunity. I think we have been on a whole web in the year. Dit is die eeuwige hoop wat ons het, van die eeuwige lewe wat ons wacht. Ons wil net die deur gaan. Amen. Ons wil net die oor win, loof die Heere. So, amazing word. Praise die Heere. Ja, dit is die Heere. Het lees wekker. Ja, ons moet so'n bykie so lees. En hier is het so licht, ek kan dit in trendie lees, want ons boor die, oor die, ja, mense, oor die Karen en Stanley. Ja, sy, praise die Heere. Ach, en ons is opgewonde, ons gaan moore vir Isabel, sien daar so in van die bouw park ook hier so na by Daniele so ons is opgewonde om morgen isie te keier en dan gaan ons die nawek gaan ons daar na Oranja wil toe, daar gaan ons vir Zandlie en Kwanet en Lindy en amal doop en ach, dit is al opgewondenheid in ons harte bid baie vir ons en dat die Heere net krachtig deurbreek in elkeense lewe loof die Heere jy moet een lekker aankeer en ons sien mekaar, wanneer ons mekaar sien, ons sal jy op hoogte bye bye jylle